How you going design figures? My name is Matthew Sear and today we are going to be getting into variable layering. Last year Figma released the way for us to be able to apply our variables to our components but also our now sub components. Now we can be able to use variables within those sub components to be able to change the way that the component works. What this does for us is allow us the ability to dynamically change the sub components within our main component using variable layers. If you'd like to do something like this, or like to learn a little bit more about variable layering, you're in the right place. Sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. Just before we jump into the video, I wanted to say, if you're enjoying the content so far and you haven't subscribed, then let's make a deal. I can make a lot more content. I can keep making better things, but I can only do that with the feedback of the community. Are you liking, subscribing, commenting in the description, letting me know what you like, what you don't like, letting me know what you're looking for and how I can help you, the design community, keep growing, building and creating fun things. Well, if you let me know, I can continue to build and create better videos that are more tailored towards what you guys are looking for. So please jump on board like subscribe and let's create together all right here we are inside of figma let's get stuck into it what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a very simple component it's going to hold a header subheader and a paragraph and what it uh, will do is allow us to select the component turn on and off the header on and off the subheader and paragraph. It will also allow us the ability to choose from our mobile, tablet, and desktop. And yeah, let's create this component. So what I have done is I've got basically just some three different little text elements all laid out. I've got my header text, I've got my different levels of my header text. So this will be like my mobile version, this will be my tablet version, and this will be my actual desktop version. What I can do is I can quickly just rename these. So let me just go over here, right click there, and we'll just make sure that those are named as header. These will be just named as my subheader. There we go. And they already got my paragraph text, which I might just use paragraph and I will rename those as well. All right. What I'm going to have to do is actually put them into a component. What I'm click on, I will click here and I can go create component, and I can make each of these a component. Now, what that does is it adds a frame around each of these. So what I would like to do is just to make sure that the text that's inside of it, what that text will need to do is fill the container, which means that these will all need to be an auto layout. So let's go auto layout and we can go auto layout. There we go. So I can select all of these and I can actually click enter and I can make them fill the container they're in. So if I was to grab all of these containers and I was to crunch them, you could see that it will notch the text down to the following line. If you'd like to make sure that text, for example, truncates, just click the three little dots over here and you can go to your little A and truncation and you can truncate the text. What I can do is I can select all of these components now and I can actually combine them into a basically a complete component. And this is my header component. And I'm going to turn these into the different sized layers. So let's just give that parameter a name and say something like size 
And let's define the size here. So I'm gonna call this one my large. This one is gonna to go to be my medium, and this can be my small. So now that I have my large, medium, and small, I can actually do the same thing for my other. So I'll right click and I'm just gonna create component, create component, and I will also create a component here. I will select, I can actually as well, make sure that's an auto layout, auto layout, and I can go auto layout. One thing is I'll make sure this time around, and I will fix it up here as well. I'm just gonna make sure that auto layout will make sure the text is centered inside that container that I created. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's also left aligned. Now you can make it basically top left aligned if you like, or you can make it center left aligned. Completely up to you. I will probably do center just for time being. If I was to expand the container, I wanna maintain it to be in the center. That's, that's all it is. So I'll select my headers over here and make sure that they are also doing the same. I'll remove that little 10 because I don't like any odd numbers that are not in there. And there we go. Now I can select all of them and I can combine them. And just like what I did with my header here, I have those sizes and I can do the same for this. I can call this one sizes and I can give them a similar actual grouping. So that would be my large, that can be my medium, and this one can be my small. And as we can see over here, we have our paragraphs. So what I'm going to do is I'll do, yeah, pretty much the same thing. We can go create component, create component, and create component. I can select all of these components Remember, if I press enter, I can go down one of the layers. And <clears throat> the difference is this was wrapping, which is fantastic. Definitely want that to take place. Now, interestingly enough, let's actually start to look at a couple of fun little things you can do with your text. I can actually, for example, I could say truncate, but I also could say truncate and I could give it three lines. So it will truncate after the three line, which means that you can define the amount of lines that you want to show. And as you crush it down, it will only be those set lines, which is fantastic. For this, I'm actually going to actually put that at four lines, allowing for them to have four lines. And I'm actually going to update my other ones over here. So let's select all of those first. I'll just combine that into one. And I will make sure I finish this one off. So let's go sizes. And I can make sure that inside of these, I will also set them to be an auto layout like the other ones before. And the difference with this auto layout, this one's definitely going to anchor in that top left and I will still make sure that the text within side will fill. So let's just grab my text. Let's just make sure that that's filling that container. I could actually, by the way, because it is a component variant, I can actually set that to be an auto layout, which means that I could grab the children within inside. I could say, hey, fill the container and it will actually do this. The great part about doing it this way means that if I was to have a, another frame, that frame was already an auto layout. Let's just make sure it's a bit dark. If I was to just grab this component and add it in, it is ready to go when it comes to being responsive inside that frame, which is good. And I'm going to actually now click on these and also set them into an auto layout frame. Because what it will do is it will make sure that if I swap change or add these in a component, they will adapt correctly and maintain consistency. I will select all of these. I'm also going to tell all of these to fill the container that they're within. Ideally, we will have that filling. If it's not filling, then something's broken. I will click enter, click enter, and make sure the text 
inside all are filling. I'll make sure that the frame is also filling, which means that I can do this. All right. What I'm gonna do is I want my actual sub headers. I want those sub headers to be truncated. They only get one line. I want my headers to also truncate, but I will give them two lines. And now I can, you know, play around, use this block. Great, great days, good times. But we still don't have our changing components. So let's grab, we're gonna start, I'll start with the mobile version. I will just grab all those mobile pieces, basically. And I will just arrange them into, you know, a component. I can grab this here. I can say that they can be spaced about 16 apart. Oh, no, we'll leave that. Now I'll just check it, chuck it into an auto layout. I'm going to call this one text block. There we go. And I'm going to turn that into a component. Now my text block is a component, which is fantastic. And I can click my component. I can make sure that it is uh, an auto layout, which it is, which is fantastic. I'll make sure the children with inside of it also fill the container. And now they should all adapt and use the text rules that we set up for this container. Now we haven't got into the fun part just of yet, but we're going to be basically uh, applying a way for us to simply just pick and choose a, a you know small to medium to large, which is on our mobile, tablet, and desktop. So what we can do is we can go up to our local variables and let's go and create ourselves a new collection. Let's call it collection our size or actually let's say platform and our platform will have a text string and we here have three different components but we're using the same name so let's just call this size if we like and we are able to call this one small. This one can be medium. And this one can be out large. So we're going to say here, mobile. And tablet. Whoop. And over here, this will be our desktop. There we go. So maybe I can say text sides. So what I can do is I can click on my component and when I click into my component, now I have these sub components. They are called size. This one says small, but I can go to large and medium. And you see that I have a little variable, little icon just over here. And what I can do is find that text size that I created and I can apply it. I can also go here and I can do the same thing. So I can go text, size, apply, text. There we go. And apply our text size, apply there. All right, bear in mind, this one just did a dash root. So something's broken in our actual design. What did we not do? I didn't actually define these here by the naming convention we set up. So, you know, when you end up having an issue, you'll see a dash root and I will see something's not lining up. It means the text doesn't match. What we're going to do is over here, I can make sure that I can make it match by going small, medium, and uh, my large. And once I've done that, I can click back in. You can see that it matches all good days. 
And now I have this component. That means I can drag out from my component and I can click on my layering. I can see platform and I can choose my desktop. And now the component will respond and adapt and the text will adapt and respond to that container based on the fact that I have applied desktop there. But I could just basically do that. Um, I could leave it at the top and let's say I have my design. Maybe I have a, for example, let's just pretend that, uh, you know, a screen like this will be my tablet and maybe I'll have like some mobile screen and then let's just make another one. This one will be more of like my desktop, make it much bigger. There we go. And I'll make that one like, right. What I can do is I can just grab this component. I could chuck it in there and in here. I'm not really worried about the colors right now, but what I will do is I just go over here. I can actually set my, say, yeah, you're totally the desktop. I'll say that your desktop And I'll make sure tablet. And I'll say this one mobile. Oh. There we go. And done. What I have is I've got these here and here. Let's just, I don't know, give it a little bit of darker frame size. And what it will do is it will take that text and it can automatically change the layer of the text based on what the frame is defining. So if I was to grab that the, the mobile one that's down here, uh, drag it on there, bam, it, it's updated right up to my actual desktop size. So this is how you can create your own basically text elements. And this is a great part about it. These are individual text elements too. So they also will be able to actually adapt if you've set up the variables with them. So let's say I want this one. I can easily apply that text size and I can now have a header that will adapt to the screen that it's within. And I can also set those up for basically subheaders, even just the paragraph. So I can use these paragraphs by applying that size component to it, or the size layering to it, and then I'll be able to have my text respond to the size that the frame will specify. Which this one will be mobile. Like, there we go. So this is how you can actually set up a and use layering and use variable layering to define what you want inside of your layers and components and frames and how you can use it to adjust and adapt the uh, content within. Uh, my suggestion next for you guys, give it a shot. See what you can do. Maybe you can change some icons. Maybe you can change some colors and maybe you can change other dynamic pictures and videos and even some interactive components. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope that these videos have been helpful for you. I really appreciate if you like, subscribe and also provide comments, feedback. Let me know in the description box below what you think and if you have any other ideas for videos. But until next time, design thinkers, keep thinking, keep building, keep creating amazing things, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.